questions you'll hear when it comes to total solar eclipses is how dark is it going to get? And that's a great question. A lot of the stories you hear at first are going to be focused on how animals behave. Things like horses and cows coming back to the barn as totality approaches because the light's getting dim enough that the animals think evening is here and it's feeding time. Another story will be, you know, birds start flying back to their nests. I lived in the path of totality in 2017 and we heard all these kinds of stories ahead of time, but after the eclipse, I had my students telling me stories of these exact things. I was also a beekeeper and one of my fellow beekeepers watched the eclipse out by his hives to see how the honeybees would behave during an eclipse. What happened was that as the light dimmed, the bees started coming back to the hive like they were going to be in for the night, but if they couldn't make it back, they would land in a sheltered spot and basically be ready to overnight in the field. Now these experiences are great stories, but they still don't quite answer that question of how dark does it get? So let's take that answer in two parts. First, we're going to look at the partial phases of a solar eclipse. The intensity of the light coming off of the sun's surface is so great that you're not going to notice any significant change in brightness until the sun is almost fully covered. In fact, if it's less than 80% covered, you probably won't even know that there's an eclipse happening at all. Once you get above 80%, you'll start to notice the change in brightness. 90%, you can easily tell the difference. And at 95%, things start to actually get really interesting. Everything dims, the shadows get sharper, and light just takes on a different character. Um, I think my wife's description of that eclipse was perfect. She said, that's the kind of light that Hollywood is trying to produce in all of these post-apocalyptic movie scenes. So how dark does it get during the total phase of a solar eclipse? It gets fairly dark, but there's not one single answer to that question of just how dark it gets. It's going to depend on your location within the path. The deeper you are into the eclipse's shadow, the darker it's going to be. If you're closer to the edge of the path of totality, it's not going to be quite as dark because you're going to have more light kind of coming in from the sides. The general rule of thumb that you'll hear people talk about is that during totality, the ambient light is about like it would be on a clear night with the full moon. This is really difficult to capture with a camera because your camera settings are going to determine how your image turns out. And this month's feature image is a great example of that. This month's feature image was taken in northern Chile on July 2nd, 2019. And I'll talk more about that eclipse in the July 2023 video. But no surprise, the eclipse was amazing. During totality, I took a series of landscape images, all just one right after another. And this image was the best at showing details in the corona. The problem was the exposure is so short that there's not much detail in the landscape. I mean, you can kind of see the outline of the mountains on the horizon, but that's pretty much it. Here are some of the other photos I took just within seconds of this one. And no surprise, when you have a longer exposure, you're going to get more from the corona. It's just going to be larger, but you do get less detail. The big gain, however, is you get more structure and detail in the landscape coming out. Now, a lot of this is simply due to the limitations of cameras, because the human eye has a much, much better ability to process a wide range of brightnesses all at the same time than any camera does. Compare all of these images to this video taken with a simple smartphone camera. The smartphone camera makes it look like it's perfectly bright outside. But as someone who was there on the ground, I can tell you that the experience was brighter than what you oh see no! in the still images, but a lot dimmer than what you see in the video. And all of this just goes to show that you really have to be there for yourself in order to know what an eclipse experience is like and just how dark it gets. This month's other eclipse image comes from Antarctica, and it's a comparison of two views from NASA's Landsat 8 weather satellite. Landsat took images of the same location in Antarctica, one before the December 2021 total solar eclipse started, and then it caught it again during totality. And you can see how dramatically the view darkened. 
the view of a solar eclipse is truly unlike anything else you're going to experience. However, there's a second benefit, and that's the new moon. This means that the sky at night will be as dark as possible. If there is a best time during the month to see the Milky Way, it's either the night right before or right after a solar eclipse. Also from July 2019 in Chile is this simple picture looking toward the center of the Milky Way galaxy. That's Jupiter just below and to the left of center. As you start to plan for the annular eclipse of October 14th, 2023 and the total solar eclipse of April 8th, 2024, make sure you have plans for enjoying the darkness and the view both by day and by night.